let's be clear, like the person that follows not just him, but people that look like him that are under the age of 30 or even 25. And so he's saying, look, I'm not calling him a bad person, but let's just be honest. Coach Greg, in today's video, it's a serious topic. We have Phil Heath calling out Sam Sulik. I want to start out this video by saying that Phil Heath does not hate on Sam Sulik. In fact, he said he met him, he talked to me, he thinks he's a very nice guy. However, he wants to address the concerns he has on Sam Sulik and his message of all his followers, the millions of fans, and what that may or may not be doing to followers of Sam Sulik. We live in this society where an algorithm can make you famous for what? And so essentially what he's saying is, look, you don't have to be a competitive bodybuilder. You don't have to get up on stage and win anything, the Mr. Olympia or anything. You can just post a bunch of photos, videos of yourself training, take a bunch of gear, get jacked, get swole, and get millions of followers and get sponsorships. What do you make of that new young lad? I forgot his name. You know, um, you might have seen him. He's got the long curly hair. And he oh, Sam. I think everyone knows who this guy is. He's got, what, five plus million followers on Instagram. He's literally the most famous social media influencer right now, even more famous than Chris Bumstead. Although Chris Bumstead technically has more followers. I think more people are talking about Sam Sulik or at least watching his videos. He's only 21 years of age. Chris Bumstead, he's in his late 20s. He's a five-time Mr. Olympia champion. And so I do think it makes a difference. Sam Sulik's followers are primarily teenagers. Chris, perhaps some teenagers, but a lot of the Chris followers, they're in their 20s, 30s, or they're in their 40s like Coach Greg. And so because of that, the fact that these guys are very young, they're highly influential. And so depending on what Sam does or doesn't do or says or doesn't say, it can have a lasting impact on their life. Because he's a very young man and he's, very. he's running a lot of juice, clearly. I mean, I have no idea what the cycle is, right? But I can say this. I mean, I met him. He was a nice guy. Mm -hmm. He's never actually said what he's taking. I don't know if he said, hey, I'm 100% natural. Of course, he's perhaps hinted at these things, but remember, he lives in the United States. It's not exactly legal to do these things. And so does it really make sense for him to say, hey, I've done X, Y, Z? I don't think so. And I don't think we can expect him to come out and say, this is the exact cycle I've done. I highly doubt that he's only taking HRT from a doctor, that he was perhaps hypogonadal, that he needed this. I really don't think that's true. Maybe we don't know. But because of this and because of the unspoken word, because the fact that he is just so massive, it is assumed that he's taking something. And because of that, does that not influence perhaps thousands, tens of thousands, millions of young fans to copy in his footsteps? I feel like he has an interest to compete. He went to Dino's gym, which was interesting because he was um, put through the pace as far as posing in, is concerned. He got a <laughs> wake up call. Personally, I don't think Sam Sulik will ever set foot on stage. And I'm not saying this to knock him down, I'm not saying this to be discouraging, to put him down. I think he has an amazing physique, but how could he ever live up to people's expectations? He has over 5 million followers. I think people think he could be an IFBB pro. There are many athletes out there with far fewer followers that would absolutely be able to beat Sam Sulik if they were to step foot on stage. And imagine the pressure that would be on Sam as he goes to compete on stage. 5 million, perhaps he'd have 10 million followers by then, all expecting him to win. And what if he doesn't show up and take first place? What if he doesn't win the overall? The expectations are tremendous. And with greater expectations comes greater pressure. And so what what do you think he's going to do? Is he not going to feel the pressure to use and abuse performance enhancing drugs? And so let's say he does amazing. He gets second place. People are going to say, oh, you got second. Are you going to compete again? When's your next show? And so do you not think he'd feel even more pressure to do more? And let's say best case scenario, he enters the competition and wins. Now what? Now he has to step it up. He has to go to a higher level of competition, perhaps a pro qualifier. And now he's going to be going up against the best athletes in the entire country. And so no matter what he does or doesn't do, the pressure is going to be there. He may develop body dysmorphia and he may feel an increased need to use and or abuse performance enhancing drugs. And I'm glad he did because he, I feel like he is now at a point where if he really wants to compete, He's got to make that look effortless now. He does his poses in the gym on his own, holds the pose for a couple of seconds, but that's nothing like you're going to do on stage. It's much more difficult. And remember, he's doing this in his off season. It only gets harder when you're on a diet. He's having Papa John's, his chocolate milk. He's in a bulk. He, he's eating a lot of calories. And so could there ever be a time that's easier? And so if he ever does choose to compete, of which I don't think he will, the pressure is just that strong. 
it's going to be a wake up call. Consider the trend twins right now are prepping for a bodybuilding competition. Remember last year, they wanted to be the youngest pros ever. They're already suffering right now. And so imagine when they get, for example, 10 pounds leaner. If it's hard now, how hard is it going to be in a month? And so Sam, although he's gone on cuts, he's never gotten truly shredded. Same as the trend twins. Once you get to six, five, or even 4% body fat, it is a different level of suffering. It's very interesting to see someone as um, sensational as this guy is, but I don't know if there's educational content as to how he got there. And so he says, I haven't sat down with Sam to talk about this. I don't know exactly who is coaching him. I don't know what he's doing right now. He's not actually competing, but how exactly did he get to that physique? Is he in fact 100% natural? And if he is in fact using steroids, how much? And when did he start? I get there's a double-edged sword with this. Like if you say, oh yeah, I'm on test and I'm on this, I'm on that. Well, we all know you're committing a felony. <laughs> yeah. Because it's illegal and that's the other part. Now remember, we know someone who has even more followers than Sam Sulik. Someone who has definitely got a better physique. His name is Chris Bumstead from Canada where steroids are in fact legal. That's right. You can use steroids in my country. You're not breaking the law. Of course, you can't sell them. That is the catch-22. And so if you're in a country like Canada or if you're in the UK where steroids are legal, you can use them, you can admit to it and you don't get in any problems. But if you're from the United States, you do in fact have to be careful. If he says that, then people are going to say, hey, you're a cheat. You're on steroids. You're not natural. And so they're going to take the hard work that he's put away from him. But is that necessarily bad? Should he be in fact praised for his accomplishments? Because let's consider this. Has anyone said anything negative about Chris Bumstead having started steroids at the tender age of only 18? Does anyone think that at 18 years of age, you're old enough to start using and abusing performance enhancing drugs? I don't care if you're Chris Bumstead or if you're the gift Phil Heath, no one should be using steroids as a teenager. You're far too young. Unless, of course, your doctor prescribes it for you that you need it. No one should be abusing steroids. Taking anything is abused at that age. And so if Sam Sulik were to say, yeah, you know, I started taking steroids at 18. I watched Chris Bumstead. He started at 18. And so I want to do the same thing. Do you not think there's going to be another Sam Sulik, another Chris Bumps that comes along in a couple of years and says, well, I was watching Chris Bumps, I was watching Sam Sulik, and I decided to take steroids at 16 because I want to look like Chris. I want to look like Sam. And so I'm going to take them because I need this. Every year, every generation, people do things younger. They'll do everything or anything to live up to social media standards. And the standards, they keep rising. The records get broken. People are bench pressing 500 pounds at 17 years of age. We've got 13-year-old girls squatting squatting over 300, it's gotten absolutely ridiculous. So it's hard, right? Mm. You know, it's not calling him a bad person. It's just like, let's be clear, like the person that follows not just him, but people that look like him that are under the age of 30 or even 25. And so he's saying, look, I'm not calling him a bad person, but let's just be honest. If you're under 30 or 25 and he's saying, how old is he even? He's only 21. He probably thinks he's even older. When you're 21 years old and you look like that, chances are you're probably not natural. And if you look like that, and even if you don't say anything, do you not think that you're in fact advertising for the use of performance enhancing drugs? Even if you say nothing, if you have that body and people know that you can't get that body unless you take something, then you're indirectly promoting it. You're saying this is okay. And considering it's in fact illegal in the United States, is this the proper message we want to deliver to our younger teenagers? I know I'm not a father. I'm not a dad. I don't have kids, but I was a school teacher. And if I had a kid and he was 14, 15, 16 years of age and lifting weights in the gym, and he said, my hero is Sam Sulik, I would be concerned. I'd be worried, not because Sam's a bad person, not because he doesn't have a great message, not because he's not educated, not because he doesn't put out quality content, but because of his physique and the fact that I know that that kid, that kid of mine, even with amazing genetics, better genetics than me, is not going to look like that at 21 without using and abusing performance enhancing drugs. And so as a parent, I would be concerned. I would be scared. Same as if the kid said, hey, I want to look like Michael Hearn. I want to look like The Rock. He's my hero. Or any superstar action hero. I don't care if it's Arnold Schwarzenegger or Rambo. Any of these guys say, I want to look like that. Do you really? And that kid, he's trying to fit in with his friends and so on. He's swiping left and right and up and down on social media and Instagram and so on. And if I only had that body, I would have more friends. I would have more confidence, self-esteem and so on. And so imagine the pressure that kids feel to try to look like perfection in order to feel like they fit in in today's world. How does that resonate with 
a 14 year old. They may look at him and say, well, I don't care about competing because, oh, that takes a lot of work. Yeah, it takes a lot of years. I just want to get Jack like Sam, make some videos on YouTube, become Insta famous, YouTube famous, be a social media influencer and have tons of contracts, people lined up to take my photos and so on. How does that sound like a bad life? Do you not think the pressure to take steroids, SARMs, growth hormone, whatever is there stronger than last time? Because does anyone actually think that a 14, 15 or 16 year old thinks they can look like Sam Sulik while being 100% natural? I don't think they do. And when I talk to the teenagers and I ask them, what are your favorite videos from Coach Greg? Almost always do the teenagers say the natty or nots. And I say, why? They say, because it gives us realistic expectations on what we can actually look like. I like learning that this social media influencer that I thought was natural probably isn't. And so it lowered my expectations. I thought, well, I'm not going to look like that. And so I'm going to have the bar set here instead of up here. And so if people know that Sam Sulik isn't natural, that he's five foot 11, six feet tall, 235 pounds ripped, that perhaps he'd only be 185 pounds without steroids, they might lower their expectations and say, you know what? It's not worth it. And so if Sam said, you know, I started using steroids at 18, don't know what age he started. Don't know if he's natural or not. We don't know. But if he said, I was watching Chris Bumstead and he started at 18, of which he's admitted, that's why I'm saying this. And I thought, well, I want to do the same thing. But you know what? I don't have the best of blood work. I'm actually a little bit nervous. I'm scared for my future. We know of people who have died in their 20s. We all know Rich Piana passed away. He was in his 40s. Many other people have died in their 20s and so on. And I'm not going to mention everyone's names. They don't need to do that. But you know it's inherently risky. And somebody's going to say, yeah, but you're a hypocrite, Greg. You used and abused steroids. Yes, but I was in my 30s. I wasn't doing it at 18, 19, 20, 21, and so on. I competed 42 times. 42. Has Sam Sulik done two shows? Has he done any? But yet he already may in fact be using and abusing steroids. And so what is my message? Wait till you're older. At least learn how to train in the gym first. Maximize your eating. Maximize your training, eating, getting your rest, sleep, proper recovery. When you're a teenager, you have newbie gains. You shouldn't be using steroids. But the more people become famous who are using steroids, the more the pressure for younger people to use steroids is going to be stronger than last time. And I'm like, dude, like, trend. All right, all right. You guys are like, how do how do you not cough? your lungs out. And so think of it. Phil Heath is saying he'd use Tren and he was getting a Tren cough. He's like, I don't want that in my body. It's not safe. But yet we have guys named the Tren twins. They're also only what, 21, 22 years of age. People are thinking, I don't want to wait till I get older. I want to do it right now. And so I would hope, I would pray that the younger influencers, those who are perhaps using and abusing performance sensing drugs, are giving out all of the negative consequences, the good, the bad, and the ugly. If you watch my videos, do I not comment on the negatives? Do I not talk about the potential deaths, the heart attacks, the high blood pressure, the cholesterol, the body dysmorphia, the fact that you might not be able to get the private parts in the downstairs harder than last time? I talk about the depression you can experience when you go off of these compounds, how you can feel like garbage. I I talk about the dangers of having single digit body fat, how you can feel like dog shit. And so if you watch my videos, or for example, if you're a parent and you're thinking, I don't know if I want my kids to watch those Coach Greg videos, what do I explain in my videos? Do I not explain the good, the bad, and the ugly? Remember, with knowledge comes power. I believe that people should know everything. The more they can know, the better. But if people are taking performance enhancing drugs in secret, not talking about it, not addressing it, is that really enough? And so for me, I believe this. I think that if people are following younger influencers who are on performance enhancing drugs, it's going to in fact influence them to want to take it. You might debate me and argue me and say, no, it's not going to. If they don't talk about it, it's perfectly okay. I personally think it would be better if they did in fact share this. I don't know if they can for legal reasons, but if they at least share it and say, yeah, I take this and these are the bad things. And you know what? This is my blood work. And I'm doing it, but it's my choice. And I might be taking 10 or 20 years off of my body, but this is why I'm doing it. At least then the people can make their own decisions. But if they don't talk about it, all they see is the good. Sam Sulik, he's way more cool than you, Coach Greg. He's way more popular. He's taller. He's better looking. He has more money. He has a much better sounding voice. You talk like the parrot from Aladdin. I'm listening to him. Remember, I'm old. I'm 48 years of age, but what you don't realize is I was once Sam Sulik's age. I was once tempted to use performance enhancing drugs at a younger age, but the temptation 
It wasn't as strong as it is now. And so my main message is this, please don't resort to taking performance enhancing drugs, especially when you're at a young age. Never ever break the law and only do so with the advice and consent from your own doctor. Bodybuilding is probably the, the only sport where because of PEDs, there are people that don't have the genetics, but can take things and abuse them and actually look pretty damn good online. And so what he's saying is the barrier of entry to be a fitness celebrity or fitness superstar, it's pretty low. If you start abusing performance enhancing drugs as a teenager for a couple of years, you're probably going to have somewhat of a good physique. And if you take photos with the proper downlighting, camera angles and so on, you can look bigger than you are. And so a lot of people are thinking, I don't have the time to be a track star, a basketball superstar, to make it to being a professional. But as a bodybuilder, I don't even have to compete. I can just get a great physique. I can talk in the front of the camera, talk about how much tran I'm blasting, make some jokes, and maybe I'll get famous. And so that is Phil Heat's concern. It's too easy to be a famous influencer. Not that it's easier, but it's certainly easier than last time. Before you had to be a champion bodybuilder, you had to win a pro show. Now you don't even need to compete. And so many people are thinking, I'm just going to get Jack and make a funny video, get popular on Instagram or TikTok, and I'm going to make millions of dollars. Well, it's still going to be hard. And is it really worth it? Is it worth sacrificing years off of your life just to try to get popular on social media when for the most part, probably not going to happen. Maybe one in 10,000 of you are going to make it. I think if I were you, I would leverage your education, your career, maybe study harder than last time. Do social media as a side thing, you know, on the side, get your education, study, get a job, do all the good things and do the social media thing on the side. And if it does take off, then hey, go with it. Do like Jesse James did. But if not, you have something to fall back on. And so please, in the comment section, let me know what you think of this conversation. Is it in fact a good thing that social media influencers don't talk about performance enhancing drugs? Should they be talking about what is the answer? I don't know the answer, but I do want to spark a conversation about it. And so please, let's have a discussion in the comment section. Subscribe, Click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. And in case you're wondering, wearing suits from LGFG, you may have seen it on Jordan Peterson or Ronnie Coleman or Eddie Hall. Check out the inside. I've got weights on the inside. It's got different numbers. It's custom made. This quality is through the roof. I've got tons of these suits from LGFG. And so I wanted to let you know that they're looking for more salespeople. And so if you're looking to kickstart a sales career in the fashion industry, learn how to close the deals, get your financial future in order and be a part of a really cool company, then check out their sales careers at lgfg.com. Calm. Remember, I don't have to say this. I'm not being paid extra to do this. They said, hey, would you mind promoting us in a video? I said, sure. Why wouldn't I? Love the suits. They're amazing. I have several of these. They have all kinds of different kinds of suits from more casual to more professional. You can pick out what you want. And so if you're interested, go hit them up, lgfg.com. And so remember, if you're trying to stay natural, there's a product called creatine. It's 100% legal. Do you know that we sell 10 to 100 times more of Turk Builder and GO2 Max than we ever sell of creatine, despite the fact there's so much research proving just how good it is in the real world, that there's so much research to back at us, people still would prefer the Acti Builder, Turk Builder, GO2 Max. And so my advice, why not start with creatine? It's the cheapest. It's been shown to work for years. And although these other products I do believe work better, why not start with just your good old creatine? You can use it year round. You don't have to cycle it on and off. And we're having a 50% off sale. Say thank you to the customers. Creatine. You guys think I'm just a snake oil salesman trying to push products harder than last time. I sell everything creatine you guys know that it works the other products i know that they work some of you are not sure if they work you're not sure you're thinking oh how could it be that true i don't lie don't bullshit i tell you the truth when i say product works it works when i say it doesn't work it doesn't work and i'm telling you turk builder ecti builder geo2 max all works my opinion better than creatine creatine been shown to work get to my website code greg 15 percent off remember it's half price and if you don't have any money, get over and get my free diet and training program. It's close to 50 pages. Spent months working on this thing. It's very educational and formative. It's going to help you right away. Become one of the 300,000 plus newsletter subscribers. And until next time, I am out.